One of the more active ways to hook fish is with surface jigs. Butch Farm of Habitat explains how it works. So we'll always start with surface jigging first mainly because of the fact that it's usually easier to catch the fish and it's less effort and work. The, the key is the lure. Colors make a difference, certain areas. So it comes in different colors, pink, red, and the orange was made specifically because we were catching shibis that were spitting up a specific bait, a crab and a shrimp that looked like this exact color. So that's what made this so popular. And you know, it's match the bait, so match the hatch, as they say. But lately, the orange has been doing extremely well. Orange and pink has always been probably the best. Orange, pink, and red. Other than that, as far as rigging goes, normally when you're jigging these, the reason we put this little band here is it helps secure the hook when you're jigging it because the lure will sit in the water, nose up like this. And as you jerk it forward, it'll come up. And then sometimes when it's pulled extremely hard, this will fly up out of the water and tangle on your main line. So what we do is with this rubber band on here, it keeps it in position. So what happens is it won't tangle as much. I'm not saying it won't tangle, but it tangles way less. And when the fish bites, the rubber band will slide and then hold on to the fish. There's also other things that we'll do to it, but I would just recommend if you're just starting doing this, is to run it stop. The best way to run it is like this in the beginning till you get used to using it. But we've had times when this actually outbit live opelu. So once you know how to do this, it just becomes another um, tool in your arsenal or another lure in your, your thing that you can catch fish with and it definitely makes a big difference on um, your catch rate or if you want to just catch enough fish to eat. This is the key right here. So normally with the taser in the rougher water, we cut open the gill plates so that way the water can run through the mouth section, come out the back, and we found in the rougher water, the lure will track a lot nicer. It doesn't trip as much and it can actually hold and swim nicer in the water. It's almost once you get the effect on how to jig um, and get the right kind of momentum, it's like the person who's really good at catching hallelujahs, and you always get the guy who has the right speed and the right thing. Same thing with these things. You, if you get the hang of it, you'll know how much to jig it as far as too much, too little, when to, and not to. The lure will actually sit in the water. When you pull it up, it'll come up and you jerk it, it'll go have a side-to-side -side motion. Kind of like the walk the dog effect, but it'll splash at the same time. Normally, most people, if they have a miss, they'll try to jerk it away or they try to set the hook on a fish. If you really watch the fish from the bridge and stuff, you can actually see the fish circle the lure and come back. So you actually want to open a bill, let it free spool, count to three, and then close the bill, and then set it by that time the fish is usually on already. So um, it's just technique and people will use different techniques for, you know, whatever fits and works best for them. The most important thing with the taser, depending on the water, is whether or not you cut the gill plates open. There's a, usually a small piece of plastic in here because the lure was originally patented not to, for this open gill plate section. All you have to do is you take an X-Acto knife and then you can clean this section out because in the lure, how it's built, there's another bulkhead in here and causes this to track nicer in the rougher water. And that's the reason for cutting out the gill plates. And then you can see how the water goes through the mouth section. And we'll always run like one orange, one red, one pink, or a combination of different things. And if somebody catches two or three fish on that particular color, then we'll swap over to that color. Um, and it's proven in the past, even though fish are theoretically colorblind, that it does make a difference. Nine times out of 10, we'll use fluorocarbon. We'll start off with as big as we can, anywhere from 130 pound tests. If it's not biting very well, we'll go to smaller line. That's typical in most fishing. Normally we'll run minimum three spans. We tie on the fluorocarbon to the lure, and you can crimp. If you're not good at tying, I always tell my guys, even though it's not the greatest knot that you may know, 
and it might not be the strongest knot, but you can tie it the best. It's always better to tie a junk knot good than a good knot junk. A simple improved clinch will work fine. If you want to change the lure, we just cut the knot and then just tie on another lure. That's why going to three spans is kind of important to us so you don't waste fluorocarbon leader because leader is expensive. So we'll just keep cutting back, cutting back, cutting back, and we notice the bite difference will change at about two spans of length. The downside to a long leader is you have to deal with it on the side of the boat. So we'll run a, just a regular French clip and it'll clip right onto your leader line. But you have to remember now, all of this leader line, you have to deal with a leader. When you get a little bit more advanced, what we do is we actually splice directly into our fluorocarbon when the fish are biting super good and we don't use any swivels. The good and bad, the good is you can crank the fish right up at leader. Nobody has to touch the leader except to guide and gaff it especially when the fish are big, you know, when they're like 40 plus. Um, basically, yellowfin are a pill on the side of the boat, especially if you put a lot of pressure and bring them up fast. So when we crank it in, we crank it right into the reel and then we gaff. So um, there's many variables on the situation, but you gotta remember, being that you don't have a swivel, it really messes up a lot of the lines down the, down the road. So it's a give and take thing. So in that respect, I would say in the beginning, just run it stock with three spans of leader line and a swivel. After you catch a few fish, you can work from there. We also use these e -cos. Usually for early morning, late evening seems to work the best. Color anywhere from, I have a brown one here with black dots, but whites, pinks, um, fluorescent greens. We use all different kinds and for different size fish at the time. We prefer to catch it with this kind of stuff in the beginning because we can use much bigger line. And we also use these um, eyeglass straps, I guess is a common thing for surface jigging. Early morning and you do it, you can do it right off your rod or with this, you can do it off a bigger rod like a 130 or an 80. And like I said, you know, if they're biting it, it's just another thing to have in your arsenal to jig on the surface.